Rockefeller. Uh, Professor uh, Pitt will uh, give the presentation on the effect of a uh, pleuronon versus placebo on cardiovascular mortality or heart failure hospitalization in subjects with New York Heart Association class two chronic systolic heart failure and analysis of the high risk groups. Professor Pitt. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to prevent, uh, present the emphasis high risk subgroup information uh, on behalf of my colleagues. Uh, this is the effect of a plerinone versus placebo on cardiovascular mortality or heart failure hospitalization in subjects with New York Heart Class II chronic systolic heart failure. Uh, I think you know that uh, this trial was presented last year at the American Heart Association and was published simultaneously in the New England Journal. The trial was stopped prematurely because of efficacy and uh, the uh, Kaplan-Meier curve on your uh, that side is the original uh, data where we had a significant 37% uh, reduction in the primary endpoint, which was cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure. I will remind you that these patients all had systolic heart failure. They were age over 55. Uh, they were on standard therapy. And they had, uh, within the last six months, either a hospitalization for cardiovascular disease or an elevated BNP or NT pro-BNP. And uh, the trial was stopped uh, because of, of this primary endpoint. Now. There's always some suspicion when you uh, stop a trial early that you stop on a high. And fortunately in this uh, study, uh, several countries didn't have a plerinone available. So after the trial stopped, we had a large subset that remained on blinded therapy uh, for about 10 months. And we achieved an additional 70 endpoints. And you can see on the additional follow-up, uh, the results are very, very similar to the initial data so that I, I don't think we really stopped on a high. Now, uh, these are the original primary endpoints for the overall trial, and you can see the, uh, and, uh, oh, sorry, these, yeah. So, highly significant results, and now we're looking at the subsets here. Uh, because of the fact that although we had excellent safety and we had overwhelming uh, efficacy, uh, many clinicians around the world are still reluctant to use an aldosterone blocker. Uh, there is a fear of uh, inducing hyperkalemia, uh, and obviously we've looked at a number of high-risk subgroups, age over uh, 75, patients with a history of diabetes, patients with chronic renal disease with a GFR less than 60, patients with an EF less than 30, and patients who had a blood pressure below the median of 123. And you can see the efficacy here. Uh, it's consistent across all of these uh, subgroups. Now, rightly so, patients and physicians are, are nervous about uh, people over age 75, but despite that, when we added a plerinone, 25 to 50 milligrams, in people over 75, we had the exact same benefit, more or less. And particular interest is the group of diabetes. Uh, there has been previous data from Dr. Struthers in Scotland showing that uh, patients with diabetes, if you give them spironolactone, you actually worsen endothelial function. And there's been a direct comparative trial uh, in Japan between spironolactone and aplerinone. And spironolactone raises hemoglobin A1C, it raises cortisol, and reduces adiponectin, whereas aplerinone doesn't. And we were pleased to see that in the subset of patients with diabetes, we're using aplerinone, we had still a very highly significant uh, benefit. In fact, the benefit was greater than the overall benefit. And the current guidelines, both in the US, the ACC, AHA, and the European guidelines, when they talk about aldosterone blockade, uh, don't specify a particular agent. But we think this data in diabetes should open the discussion, at least for a specific recommendation for a plerinone in the subset with diabetes mellitus uh, because of the marked differences. 
And another striking subgroup is the group with chronic renal disease. These people are at very high risk, but paradoxically, they receive uh, the least therapy. Clinicians are afraid of giving them target doses of an ACE or an ARB, giving them uh, an ALDO blocker, and you can see that in this subgroup, we have the same benefit, the same with the group with left uh, than EF30, and the same with the group who had lower blood pressure. People are afraid of lowering blood pressure. The mean drop in blood pressure is only two millimeters of mercury. So overall, the efficacy is no matter where we look, uh, we still have the same efficacy. And in fact, uh, we also had uh, the same uh, safety. Uh, so we had in each of the subgroups, as well as overall, a significant increase in serum potassium over five in the plerinone group and a significant reduction in hypokalemia less than 3.5. But when we looked at serious hyperkalemia, when we looked at hospitalization for hyperkalemia, we looked at hospitalization for renal disease, there was no excess whatsoever. So we have a very highly efficacious strategy uh, which maintains its safety across a number of very important subgroups, and we think this is pretty compelling uh, information to uh, increase the use of an aldosterone blocker, and in particular, a plerinone uh, in these patients with uh, heart failure, systolic heart failure, and New York heart class two with mild symptoms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions for Professor Pitt? No questions? Okay. Okay, thank you.